Hello there, could make a four here. This is the first episode of a new YouTube series that I call Computer Tourist, where I go like tourist to other people's computers. Now this isn't quite a computer. It's, if I understand correctly, a neural network inside of Scrap Mechanic that can recognize hand-drawn digits. So this is built by KPK and Digital Jedi. KPK, do you maybe like want to explain this project? Yeah, sure. So many people have probably seen um, the YouTuber Matt Batwing's uh, handwritten digit recognizer in Minecraft, and this was inspired by that. It, it kind of started as a joke, actually. We were like, you know, you, you've seen the Matt Batwing's video, right? What if scrap mechanic? And then we kind of just started playing around with, like, okay, how many weights would we need? How many of those would we need? And then it kind of just ended up being a finished project. But yeah, it is a um, multi-layer perceptron, also known as just a feed-forward neural network. And this doesn't have any back propagation. So we basically pre-calculated all of the weights um, through Python. I wrote a uh, script to import the weights onto these weight cards behind us with all like the weird speckled blue and white dots. It gets about 86% accuracy on the MNIST um, training data. Uh, MNIST is just like a handwritten digit database that is free and open source online. And it has about a three minute runtime. So it takes three minutes to calculate a digit. I guess it's time for a demo. Uh, yeah, sure. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was a bad uh, toilet design on us. <laughs> Codemaker should probably paint his own again. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, uh... Um... I do recommend the spam click method. Going for a four. And try and keep make your lines a little thick. That should work. Yeah. So like that. Alright, whenever you're ready, you can send it. Scrap mechanic we both, we both pull out our paint tools. <laughs> <laughs> I think all three of us pull out our paint tools. So you made a separate program that, I guess, simulates the the neural network structure that you built here in Scrap Mechanic. And based on that, you, you kind of train it and you see, like, how few nodes can you get away with. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. So we ended up going with, you can see back behind us, there are eight hidden layer neurons. Those are in a single hidden layer. Then of course we have the 10 output neurons, one for each digit. Yeah, and we, we also ended up, ended up shrinking down the input data set because the input data set is um, grayscale and it's 28 by 28, but we ended up shrinking it down to 16 by 16 and having just black or white. So just zeros or ones. And Matt Batwing just did the same thing in his video. That's where we got that idea from. Although he used the full 28 by 28, we shrunk it down to 16 by 16. So this is the hidden layer node zero, which we kind of use as like the central control for the whole um, neural network. So you can see this is just it counting through all 256 weights. So yeah, I think this is probably a good opportunity for Digital Jedi to ex explain our mechanical ROM here. Yeah, so there's a couple ways you can build read-only memory in Scrap Mechanic. There's, of course, logic ROMs that are pretty small. You could do this with sensors, just all sensors in paint. But that obviously would have required thousands of sensors to make it work at this scale. This is one kilobyte, so 8,192, I believe, sensors. Each each one of these uh, these modules, right? So you have eight of them. Yeah, each one oh. of these is one kilobit. Yeah, each one of these is one kilobit, eight of them, so one kilobyte. Oh, a kilobit. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah okay. Each it makes is, sense. Um, 256 by four. But then the way this works instead is we cut down the number of sensors by a factor of 16 by just moving them along with these pistons. And if you notice, the length of the pistons counts in binary, so they directly correspond to part of the address. You can see there's a, scr a mini screen on every single one of these nodes. Um, so every yeah. single hidden layer neuron shows you the weight that it's currently reading in. Basically, it's a lot of zeros right now because a lot of the screen is blank. It only actually reads in the weight if there's a white pixel there. But in a neural network with multiple possible values, you'd be multiplying that pixel value by the weight. But here, yeah. since it can only be one or zero, we just take the bitwise and of the weight and that as well. Because oh, so you say yeah. like get away with just like doing an and. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, and then everything and then, happens in this adder instead. Yeah, what you're standing on is the adder. It is a carry look ahead adder, and then it just basically saves the output and feeds back into itself, so it keeps a running tally. So I guess okay, so we just had a look at the at the hidden layer, which is 
eight neurons, if I count correctly. Correct. Yeah. And they are numbered, but that's just a bit arbitrary. Those are not like associated with the actual output numbers, right? Correct. Yeah, that's just so we can keep track of which weights go where. So then these output nodes, though, these numbers are actually correlated with the number. Over here, we have the MUX, which switches between which of eight input neurons it's reading from at the moment. Yeah. To correspond with the appropriate uh, weights. Yeah. And these actually do have to do hardware multiplication. So we take yeah. in the seven bit output value. There's there, there's no like neuron. getting away with just doing an and because you have to like multiply. Yeah. You have to multiply by a signed four bit integer. So this is the multiplier here. It does this right here. And then we managed to end up with a maximum of a weird 11 bit output size from this. <laughs> so we have this 11 bit carry look ahead adder. And this 11 bit <laughs> memory cell is here. To store yeah, all yeah, of yeah. our uh, outputs. It's a very strange very size, but I thought about doing 13 at one point just to be funny. Oh, okay. So now it's like doing stuff. Yeah. Now, now this neuron runs and it's already done yeah, yeah so yeah. like the the hidden layered neurons so these that we're looking at right now are much faster because although they have to do more stuff they only have eight inputs as opposed to 256. Yeah. and then over here is the uh this is the output comparator back here it's sort of by itself this thing's job is to look at all 10 outputs it has an even bigger multiplexer this one is 10 ways by 10 bits instead of 8 ways by 8 bits. And its job is to take each input and load it into this comparator over here. Yeah. And if the value in this register over here is greater than the value in this register over here, which starts off at 0, so the first value always gets saved, it will save it to this one here, and then it will save the, the neuron that it came from over into the output. So it sort of works its way through and goes, okay, how confident were we that it's a zero? How sure are we that it was a one? And so on, all the way yeah. to nine. Oh yeah, so it's done now. So it says it guessed correctly. It was a four. Hooray. Yeah, four, is, four is one of the better numbers. Yeah, it's definitely good at fours. When you get into all the ones with like the three horizontal sections, you know, like eight, five, three. That's where it's hard. Of, sometimes that's where it's hard because there's less that differentiates the digits. Yeah, like only the very subtle, like, detail that some of the lines aren't connected. Yeah. Like that, it would Oh, even if you draw it like that. Yeah, that it's gonna think is a three, I'll bet. All right, let's try and, let's try and fix my eight a little bit. Make it actually look like an eight. Okay, that's not bad. We'll see what it does. That should, that should return eight. It looks better than some of the MNIST ones, so... <laughs> it's true. Some of the MNIST yeah. ones are horrendous. I think that's mostly our compression, not doing them any favors. Yeah. And so this is just every number 1 through 9, or 0 through 9. And so if we pull out this one, you can see, oh, that's a 4. from the. This is a 4 from the actual data set. Ah. On. There's a 2, you know. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's very different from what we draw on Scrap Mechanic. Yeah, yeah, they're actually like handwritten. Are, are these and just the... uh, just random ones that were uh, like excluded from the actual training? Yeah, so these ones, it has never actually seen these numbers before. It's never trained on these numbers. Like, look at this six. That's a six. Yeah. And it got, and it got this right when we tested that one. Also, the four and the two down here, like, it's a very yeah. similar Yeah, I mean, shape. like, looking, looking at this data set, I'm actually pretty surprised that it works with your scrap mechanic digits. Yes, so let's see if now. it worked, if it recognized the 8. Yes, oh, it, it did. I mean, that's a pretty nice. ugly 8. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, if it's ugly enough, it'll work. <laughs> yeah, if you get enough like little greevelies go and you grab the right pixels. <laughs> and we do have plans to speed this up as well. So... Yeah, so I, I heard that this is like uh, more of a... What you call it? A proof, proof of concept. concept. Yeah. 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 So you may notice that each of the piston ROMs has 64 pistons or 64 sensors, right? Yeah. And there's these 16 sets of four gates. So in theory, we could be reading 16 weights at once into 16 adders and doing like an entire vertical stripe of the screen at a time. 
which would make these input neurons uh, about 16 times faster. Yeah, but like that paralyzing adds, the addition operation. Yeah, but it also just makes this so many more gates yeah. than it is currently. And I think if we go super big like that, we might try to do a different architecture for the network. Like we might just try to go straight for a full convolutional network. But as a proof of concept to be like, well, could we just like in theory build this? Yes, it does function. Yeah, break I, I guess it's something we totally forgot to mention that you made this in fully vanilla, right? Yeah, this is all vanilla and we haven't even done anything like self-wired XORs for memory. So this yeah. is vanilla and no glitches as well. All these no but you did use glitches. some like, yeah, I, I do assume you use some quality of life mods. Yeah, we used the multi-connect tool to make wiring up the screen easier because there's just 256 connections in, in that one little area. He, and then also yeah. the parallel connections tool was very helpful for wiring up like the uh, eight bit outputs of the neurons and the ten bit uh, comparator. So yeah, that's it for the first episode of Computer Tourist. As I told in the beginning of the video, Computer Tourist is a new series on my YouTube channel where I will show off uh, creations, computer science creations made by the community. Um, it doesn't really have to be in a computer. It doesn't really have to be a scrap mechanic. If it's like something, if it's something fun inside of a video game, send me a DM and like we'll chat about it for an hour and I'll condense it down into a nice 10 minute video like this. I do this to make sure that projects like these don't get forgotten about and that they'll be seen by a more general audience. Anyways, I still don't really have an outro. Um, so bye, I guess. Oh, yeah, please subscribe. And I have a Discord server with a Minecraft server nowadays.